Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. I just released a new personal animation and there is one trick I used to make it better, faster. Retiming. And we can do that in Blender. Let's check it out. As a seasoned or wannabe animator, you may have heard this advice, use references. And that's a good one. I used references to block and plan this animation. But there is one issue with references. As animators, especially when it comes to action scenes like that, our job is to push everything. And we achieve that by increasing the contrast in the motion, in the poses, in the timing, in the emotion to make things more appealing and spectacular, aka exaggeration. And we use references to make all of this believable. But the problem with references or motion captures data is that it's performed by humans with their physical limitations. And how can we fix this problem or improve it at least? with retiming. And you can also use it to fix or iterate on existing animations, and we'll see that later in the video. And fortunately, we can do that in Blender. First, I'd like to thank Motion Actor because they allowed me to use their content and references to create my animation and share it with you in this YouTube video. So I have hundreds of stunts and martial art videos filmed through different angles, providing one of the best resources for action animation. And they are accessible for free on their YouTube channel. I put the link in the description. As a reference, I'm gonna use this video. Everything is smooth and well executed. And this is the same reference using the retiming trick. And I couldn't help adding some VFX and sound. All right, so let's open Blender. Now, instead of the timeline, we need to open the video editor. And Blender video editing tools look like any other video editing software. I can press Shift A to add a new video, and I can choose a video sequence as an example. You can also drag and drop videos directly onto each track. I just loaded the video, but I can't see it. To fix that, I can open a second video sequence editor and switch the mode to preview. Now I can see the video I loaded. You can manipulate it as any object in Blender. You can press G to move it, R to rotate, S to scale, whatever. In the sequencer, pressing the N key, you can access the properties panel. Here you will find tons of options to crop the asset, change the hue and saturation, the blending mode, its transparency, etc. So basically, you could use Blender Video Editor to do video editing. Blender will play the video using the scene frame range, not the video frame range. So I need to change the end frame. I will position the playhead on the very last frame of the current video and press Ctrl End. I won't go through all the options available in the video editor because that's not the purpose of this video. What's interesting here is the time panel. We won't be using the panel, but we want to manipulate time. And to do so, we need to use retiming keys. Now, there is a visual way to manipulate those keys instead of manipulating all those values here. If we go to the strip menu, we will find a tab called retiming. How surprising! And in this tab, we will find an operation to add retiming key and to enable them. Since there is no shortcut to add a new key, I advise you to right-click on it and add this operation to your quick favorite as we're going to use it a lot. With my video strip selected, I will go back to strip and in retiming, I will enable retiming keys. As I do so, two diamond shape, the way Blender display keyframes, appeared on the strip. One on the very first frame and one on the very last frame. When selecting a retiming key on a strip, you can see a percentage appearing between two keys. This is the speed at which the in-between frames are played. By default, 100%. But if I move the last key toward the first, I'm shortening the video, making it playing faster, and we can see the speed value increasing. So let me reset the speed. So now here is my walkthrough to retime an animation or a movie clip. First, I try to spot 
the keyframes, key poses or key moment in the videos. In this case, the apex of the bounce, the moment the ball is the highest. I will press Q and add a retiming key. And I will repeat the process when the ball is leaving the ground. For me, that's a key pose. And I will add a few other key poses when the ball is about to reach its apex and when it's about to leave it. Those keys will allow me to contrast the time the ball used to travel from the down pose to the top pose. So if I now select the key just before the apex and I offset it toward the beginning of the animation, it means the ball will travel up way faster. And now the ball stays up a little longer. I can do the same by adding another key when the ball starts to fall and I will offset this toward the end of the animation. This way I'm holding the ball in the air and then I speed it up whenever it's leaving the ground or going down toward the ground. And you can see side to side the original video and the retimed one. So instead of a very linear motion, we now have a contrasting motion that feels way better. So let's now do it with a reference video. It's exactly the same process. I will load my video, obviously, set the end frame at the end of the video, and then I will try to spot the key moment or key poses of this reference. The first one is the start pose, and we already have a key there. Then the character make a spin with the staff, and now I'm trying to spot the frame on which the staff stop moving before going forward. This is the anticipation pose, and this is the key pose of that anticipation. Then it's performing a spin forward before entering a new anticipation here, and then striking with the staff. So those are key moments too. So I'm adding the key on a potential impact, and once I have those key moments, I will add a key just before and just after. I'm kind of framing those moments with keys. And then by offsetting those bounding keys, I will be able to retime the sequences in between. So first spot the key moment, then add one key after and before, and then start moving those keys in space or in time in that case. And to be honest, it took me maybe three minutes to edit this sample and get a more contrasted reference with snappier motion where I hold the anticipation and the extreme poses and where, in my opinion, I get a more appealing motion. And I could now use this as a reference, but I also use this method to iterate or fix existing animations. For example, this great cycle by Adrian Nita. Like the general motion, the poses are great, but it felt a little too smooth and linear to me. I just retimed the bounce and it feels a little better to me. By the way, this animation was made in the context of the pose cycle challenge created by the great Adam Turtle. So if you want to animate something but can't find the inspiration, or if you just want to challenge yourself, I truly advise you to follow this challenge. I will put a link in the description. I wanted to share a last example of this animation I did a few years ago. Why I think it's a great animation, there's a moment in it that really bugs me. It's this stop in the animation. I feel like I should have linked more the moment the character is rushing forward and the moment he's making the big sword spinning. And so I gave it a shot too. I just added a key where I think that would be a good blend because the character is doing a circular motion with his arms. And then I'm like, okay, I will remove whatever is not following this motion till that point. So I just need then to offset this key and the final one and see how it looks. And I do feel like it's a better flow. I'm obviously missing some frames to get a better connection between the different poses, but at least I can give it a try and this is very easy. Especially if you were to compare it to edit the original file with the character and camera animation to just test if it works. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a new thing and I'll see you very very soon.